In this video, I'm gonna go over how to actually give your voice assistants unlimited knowledge. Can you tell me about the session on reducing delays at border crossing? The session on reducing delays at border crossings is part of phase two of the workshop. The learning objectives for this session include understanding the different causes of delays. And you just take all of this, dump it all of it into Claude and just tell it, hey, look, I'm using make.com. Give me a step-by-step -step guide on how to do it. Platforms like Bland or Vapi, well, they have limits to how much data you can actually input. In this video, I'm gonna go over how to actually give your voice assistants unlimited knowledge. What I mean by that is every time that we've deployed these voice agents, especially in a employee training situation or scenario, it's really difficult to basically give your agents as much information as they need. Because platforms like Bland or Vapi, well, they have limits to how much data you can actually input. And especially specifically with Bland, the limit is about 30,000 characters. But how do you get around that while keeping the functionality of being able to have conversational pathways? This is what that video is for. Now, well, basically what we did is we're using something called Pinecone, which basically allows us to vectorize all of our data, dump it in, and then whenever Bland or your voice assistant needs that information, we're calling on Pinecone and retrieving it back. Here's what that looks like in action. I've got this PDF of something for the United Nations, some presentation that we're doing. And it's about 45 pages long. Now, if I wanted to create a voice assistant off of this, it'd be quite challenging. But with Pinecone, I can now do this. I'll go into Bland and I'll tell it to give me a call. Hey there, how can I help? Can you tell me about the session on reducing delays at border crossing? That's a great topic, actually. Let me just gather my thoughts on that for a sec. The session on reducing delays at border crossings is part of phase two of the workshop. The learning objectives for this session include understanding the different causes of delays, exploring the various procedures that apply at border crossings, and evaluating potential solutions. The session is structured as follows. One, introductory presentation, 20 minutes. The trainer begins with a presentation about the itinerary focusing on reducing border delays. Two. Perfect, thank you. Discussion. So obviously she can, go, she can keep going on and on, but the point I'm trying to make is instead of trying to pre-process this, because this is what we would do before, right? You take all of the stuff and you try to come up with the top 50 questions. And that's great for static, but especially in situations where this stuff changes a lot. Like if you have something for a presentation or a workshop, or if you have one for employee training where the products change quite often, well, it's important to have something that's a lot more dynamic. Here's how we built it. So there's basically three components in this entire system. First one is obviously Bland, which serves as the front end for the voice side of things. So that's who you actually communicate with. And then within Bland, we've got a node here that says, well, look, whenever I have a question, go to this endpoint. Now, this endpoint is actually a make scenario. If you've never used make, it's basically just a way to automate processes super easily without the need for very much code. In this instance, we're using the first one where we're actually getting answers. And then uh, we're using Pinecone as the engine to actually search up answers and then giving those answers back into Bland, which is how we get these responses. The second portion of this is, well, how do I actually upload more documents so that Pinecone is aware of whatever is new? Here's how. So chronologically speaking, you're going to want to build out the actual Pinecone, let's say, database first. And the way we did that is I'm going to dive into the scenario right here. And basically what we did is there's super simple and by the way like the links for these are going to be in the description they're not complex so don't worry about it google drive is like the hub where all of that our data files are being dumped into right and i have a, a hub right here and this is where i've got my training manual which is this now this is triggered whenever i add a file within google drive so for example if i were to take this file right here and i were to copy it i'll give it a sec and then if i were to run this you'll basically see that it saw that, hey look, there was a file here, it downloaded that file, and then it uploaded this file into Pinecone. By the way, if you're not familiar with Pinecone, I can do is just search it up. It basically a way to take large amounts of data and vectorize them. Now, the process of vectorizing, I'm not gonna pretend to be an expert in any of it, but you basically take a bunch of different words, put them into numbers, and these numbers allow the computers or machines to closely understand not only the words itself, the actual meaning behind the words. 
This is what allows computers to separate words like, uh, the popular example is, well, if you say, hey, look, what's the price of Apple compared to what is the price of an Apple? Although the word Apple is the exact same word because of the meaning behind each word, in one context, it knows that you're referring to the company, Apple. On the other hand, it knows that you're referring to the fruit. So to recap, on Google Drive, I have a file where I dump all of my data in. The second that I upload a new file, it will trigger the scenario. The second module here will actually just download the actual file that I just up uploaded. And then what it's doing is this HTTP request is actually going into Pinecone and saying, hey, look, take this file that's uploaded, vectorize it or make it into a format that's really easily understood by these LLMs and just keep it there. Then, uh, and that's basically all you've got to do to actually upload files is just this. We try to keep it as simple as possible. Now, switching gears for a sec. How do we actually retrieve the information back? Now, the part that gave me the most amount of trouble by far is the pinecone setup. Since I wasn't, I wasn't super familiar, especially if you don't have a lot of background experience or a lot of coding knowledge, this can be quite daunting. But here's me trying to make it as accessible as possible. Now, to me by far, the most daunting process of this whole system was actually getting pinecone set up because there is a tiny little bit of code you have to put in. But the easiest way I found around it is literally just to go into Pinecone's API documentation. It's amazing. And you just take all of this, dump it, all of it into Claude and just tell it, hey, look, I'm using make.com. Here's what I'm trying to do. Give me a step-by-step -step guide on how to do it. That is the foolproof, the most foolproof way I've found of actually getting this stuff to work. Then, basically, Claude will, give, will return you a bunch of different things, but basically, all you gotta do is put in your URL here. Now, this name right here has to be the name of your assistant. The assistant is the new thing that Pinecone actually introduced to be able to enable this super easily. So before you had to actually create an embedding and then upload that embedding or upsert it into a database. But with Pinecone's new assistant system, you it'll, it handles all of that for that, from chunking to embedding to upserting, et cetera, even retrieval. If you want more information on Pinecone, um, one of my good friends and my business partner, Mark, made an amazing video about the all of the backend stuff relating to Pinecone. So I, I'll link it in the description if it's out by the time that this releases. But as we're building this, just keep in mind that this word right here just needs to be equal to your assistant's name. Speaking of assistants, let's build one. If you go at pinecone.com and you go into, if you don't have an account, create one. And if you go into assistance, you can just create a new assistant. On the free plan, I believe you can have up to three assistants. And then here, let's call it YouTube Showcase. I'll create it. And then you'll have basically something like this. And the cool part is you can, if you want to try this out yourself, it's much faster, or maybe not much faster, but much better than OpenAI's assistance API. So you can literally just drag documents here yourself and chat with them if you'd like. But well, we're for what we need. The only thing really is the API key right here and the name of our assistant. Once you have both of those, go back into make, change this to be equivalent to the assistant that you're trying to refer to. API key, put it here. Content type, multi-form slash form data. And then this, this really sort of threw me in for, for a loop, but make sure that you have a download a file drive before your HTTP request into Pinecone. And then once you've got that in here, you can just put in the file that you want to upload. There, there's going to be a little pop-up that shows our little button here that says use the Google Drive or the file that was just uploaded, the downloaded version, put that into my assistant. And by the way, you can upload more than one file. Once you press OK, and that's how you give your assistant as much information as you want. Now, switching gears for a second. Sure, we now have an assistant with data in it, but how do we actually access it? Well. We have a different scenario for this. And it's also super, super simple. Like, we were, like I mentioned before, we have tried to keep it as straightforward as possible while keeping it functional. If I go into Bland, if you're not if you're unfamiliar with Bland or if you've never built voice assistants or if you don't know what conversational pathways are, if you've used Vapi, which is another voice builder, the main difference between that and Bland is Bland allows you to basically fractionalize the prompt. So instead of having one big list of instructions, it allows you to have a bunch of smaller lists of instructions. This is really powerful when you're not as concerned about maybe speed, but you want maybe not intelligence, but you have very clearly defined outcomes of the conversations. For example, we use it a lot for insurance companies where they have 
literally a half an hour sort of benefits guide that it needs to go over, you can't have those in just one list of instructions. Or if you have a ticketing service that requires very specific data points to be collected every single time, you're not as concerned about how well or how smooth the conversation is. You need it to function reliably. That's what Pathways allows you to do. So all we're saying is each of these, by the way, is called a node. The first node is just saying, it's a static text saying, hey, how can I help? Which means that every time I start this assistant, it will always start the conversation with, hey, how can I help? The second portion, which is really the meat of this whole agent. And this is, by the way, this is not a super complicated agent. It's literally four nodes. It's a webhook node. And basically a webhook node allows you to connect with the outside world outside of Bland. And this is what we're using to connect to Pinecone. If you want to create new nodes, you can press on new nodes right here. There's going to be a bunch of different options. Assuming you choose webhook node, you would then put in the webhook or the address where you're sending this request. And what are we sending? Well, before the actual request goes out, we're sending one thing, which is the user's questions. Obviously, this can be whatever you want for your specific use case, but in ours, it's the user's questions or question. The webhook right here, we actually got it from make. So what I'm going to do, let's assume you're creating a new scenario. This would be a webhook. It would prompt you to create a new webhook every single time. And then you can take the address that's giving you and just dump it right here. And now this is super important. This query is the question that's being sent. So it's super important that you, you put it in this format. It doesn't have to be the word query, but just make sure that it's in a JSON block. And then while you're sending it, another thing that's super important is the actual response that comes back. And we'll come back to this in a second. So now that we have our webhook set up and we have the question that actually that's actually coming in. By the way, if it wasn't clear earlier, this query right here needs, is gonna be is gonna dynamically fill out this. What I mean by that is, let's say for earlier, my question was, um, let's say it was, what was the target demographic? Well, this, whenever this runs, will run as query, colon, or semicolon, what is the target demographic? And that word or that sentence, what is the target demographic, is what will be sent into Pineco. So now that we have our question in our query, we have another HTTP request into Pinecone. This time it's different. Initially it was creating a new assistant or updating an assistant. Now we're actually chatting to an existing one. So very similarly to before, you take the URL. And by the way, this URL is the same for everybody. If you want more information, you can just go into Pinecone's API and then go into Assistant's API and then chat with an API. And it will give you the actual API documentation for this. But in this case, it's always post forward slash assistant forward slash chat forward slash your assistant's name. And then method is post, the name is API key, your API key, obviously. The content type is going to be a JSON block. And right here, you see, it says query because this query is just a dynamic variable while and it changes every time that this runs. This block right here, you can just basically copy it. Right now, there's two models that you can use with the assistance API on Pinecone. You've got 4.0 or GPT 4.0, or I believe it's 3.5 Sonup. Now these are slower models, meaning you'll notice that the latency is quite high with these, which is why we tend to use them for where accuracy is much more important than speed. I mean, if you're talking to an employee of your or own organization, or if you're talking to a customer who needs to follow a very specific set of instructions or has very specific questions, well, at least let them know that, hey, look, it might take a while to load just because it's thinking really clearly about the question that was, that was asked. The rest, you can leave it as is, press OK. One more thing I would do is just parse the response. That just makes it easier for at least to treat it on the, on the other side, on the bland side of things. And then on Webhook, this is just the response that we're sending over. And you can always just put this is going to be under data. You can either put it as choices, like you can even go for down into all the way into content. But I just keep it as data. It's work. It works better for us. And then now that we have this, we can now you're basically done on the make side of things. Go into bland. The extract response data. Now, this is always tricky with bland is because debugging can be sometimes a little bit challenging. But what I would suggest is just copy exactly what I did down here and then tweak it to your needs. But this is just a variable that will be extracted 
whenever the response comes back. So whatever response I give it now, I can always refer back to it within Bland as a variable called content. This is a bit more information about the what was received for Bland's uh, for context. And then this is just the location or within the JSON block, the actual location of said answer. And then we have, if you'll notice, whenever I asked it a question, it gave me sort of like a brief introduction about what it's doing, let me think about it, etc. The reason it did that is because within Bland, there's an option to actually send a speech during the webhook or to talk during it. You can either have it as a static text where it's just saying a very clear line, or you can make it AI as well, where you just acknowledge the question without answering, et cetera, et cetera. We haven't touched anything else. You can just leave it as is. We, I like to do block interruptions just so that because it's, because this is connected to the outside world and I don't want people messing with this, I would suggest doing block interruptions at this specific portion because you don't want something, something to break while it's sorting for an answer. Apart from that, you can click out of this. The only other node that we've done is where it says pathway after API response. Once it's API request completion, put it to the next node. In our case, the node is called answer. And then within this answer node, all we have, it just says, hey, look, try to answer the user's question solely based off of this. And then content, which is the variable that I mentioned earlier, which is where it saved the response from Pinecone's assistance API. And then ask if the user has any more questions. And that also allows you to have a loop because if the user has any more questions, it's gonna go right back into Pinecone and it will, that, this will keep going until the user has no more questions. So yeah, I hope that was beneficial. I hope it was valuable. It's a bit lengthy from a, a user's experience perspective, but if accuracy is the number one priority where you need to make sure, or if you have literally hundreds of pages of documents, this is the best way to get the best results every single time. And I know that this assistance API thing from Pinecone is brand new. I know we'll get improved. We'll probably have access to faster models within the next couple of weeks, if not months. And this will probably dramatically improve over the next coming weeks. Thank you very much for watching. I'm glad to be back. Any questions, comments, concerns, let me know. Otherwise, let me know what else you want me to do in this video. One thing I was thinking about is the ability to delete files. Because obviously right now you can upload files, but a limitation is you, if you delete files, well, it still remains like they haven't been deleted from Pinecone. You might remove them from Google Drive, but they haven't been removed from Pinecone. If you want a video about that, let me know. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.